Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. Like many of her colleagues in the teaching profession, our Miss Brooks, Madison High School's English teacher, watched the year 1948 come to an end with mixed emotions. As she puts it, Although the year didn't start off brilliantly or develop too sensationally, it certainly wound up in a blaze of nothing. <laughs> of course, I did enjoy my two weeks vacation. In fact, I spent most of the money I was going to borrow in the next three months. <laughs> the afternoon of New Year's Eve, Friday, December 31st, for those that still can't remember, I was chatting with my landlady, Mrs. Davis. Well, Connie, I guess you've got big plans for this evening. Frankly, I haven't got any plans at all, Mrs. Davis. Of course, I do have a date with the bashful biologist. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, what are you going to do, Connie? Probably the same thing we did last year pool our money and go to hip sings for dinner. <laughs> Fine way to spend New Year's Eve. Two Americans go to a Chinese restaurant, Dutch. <laughs> what are you going to do, Mrs. Davis? Oh, I'm going to visit my sister Angela. She's so absent-minded, poor thing. She'll probably be surprised to see me, although it was only last week that she invited me over. What time do you think you'll be leaving, Mrs. Davis? Leaving? But where? <laughs> For your sisters. For my sisters what? <laughs> For your sister's house. Oh. oh, I'm glad you reminded me, Connie. I've been making <laughs> I've been making up my New Year's resolutions, and that's the first thing on the list. I've resolved to correct Angela's absent-mindedness. Angela's absent-mindedness. <laughs> uh, what else is on the list? What list? <laughs> Maybe I'd better talk to Minerva the cat for a while We were talking about New Year's resolutions, Mrs. Davis Oh, yes, I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention, Connie Tell me the rest of your resolutions Well, first of all, I was resolved not to... What resolution? <laughs> we were speaking of yours, Mrs. Davis And before you say my what I'd like to ask you again the question I asked when we were both younger <laughs> Namely... When are you going over to your sister's house? <laughs> Maybe you better not go out tonight, Connie. You sound very strange. <laughs> it's just the way you're listening. <laughs> or are you, Mrs. Davis? Of course I'm Mrs. Davis. <laughs> now, you lie down and let me fix you some hot tea. I don't want any hot tea. I just want an answer. Thanks, Minerva. <laughs> now, about this evening, Mrs. Hello, Davis... Hello, Minerva. Want some milk, dear? Yeah. I'll get you some in a minute. You were saying, Miss Brooks... This evening? Your sister's house? Yes, I'm going over there tonight. I know, Mrs. Davis. Yeah. Right away, Minerva. What time, Mrs. Davis? It's, um... a quarter of four now that I'm always fast. <laughs> Get away from those curtains, Minerva. I'll fetch your saucer right away. Keep an eye on her, will you, Angela? I'll be glad to, Connie. <laughs> Come on, just hop into my lap, Mrs. Davis. Meow. There's a good dog. This is getting contagious. <laughs> oh, coming. Excuse me, Minerva. Why, it's Monsieur Monet. Come in. Merci, mademoiselle. Thank you. It's nice you remember me. Remember you? Why, Monsieur Manet, you're Madison High's favorite French teacher. Uh, for that, Miss Brooks, permit me to kiss your hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not give the other hand the complex. <laughs> Certainly not. Shall we go into the living room? <laughs> I, uh, I trust that I'm not arrived at, how you say, inopportunity time. What? Oh, you know. <laughs> no, this is very opportunity time. Won't you sit down, Monsieur Manet? Oh, thank you, Miss Brooks. But now that I'm teaching in America, I would appreciate it if you would call me in America. All right, what's your number? <laughs> 
No, no, no. I mean, call me Mr. Monet instead of Monsieur. Oh, certainly. Here you are, Kitty. Here's a nice saucer of... Oh, I didn't know anyone had come in. This is Mr. Monet, Mrs. Davis, our new French teacher at Madison. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Monet? How do you do, Mrs. Davis? I kiss your hand, madame. I'll hold your saucer, madame. <laughs> a lovely lady with a lovely hand. Meow. <laughs> Stick out your paw, Minerva, you're next. <laughs> If Mr. Monet came over to see you, Connie, I'm sure he doesn't want to talk to Minerva. I'll just take her into the kitchen. Come along, dear. There's a good kitty. Come drink your milk out here. So nice to have met you, Mr. Monet. Oh, likewise, I'm sure. She's very nice here, Mrs. Davis. But why she run away so fast? In the words of some of my pupils, why she took some powder and put it on the lamb? <laughs> Oh, you mean she took a powder or took it on the lamb? May we? She flew out of here like a bat out of Mr. the... Mr. Monet. <laughs> you're, uh, you're learning faster than you're teaching. <laughs> no, Mrs. Davis was just being tactful. I guess she thought you wanted to be alone with me. Alone with you? But why, Miss Brooks? I'm a married man. Oh, I know, but Mrs. Davis doesn't know about your wife, Mr. Monet. Oh, oh, Miss Brooks, I, I don't know what plans you have made for New Year's Eve, but my wife Elaine and I would be very flattery if you would join us. Well, thanks, Mr. Monet. I'm flattery that you should ask me. <laughs> but as far as I know, Mr. Boynton is taking me out tonight. Oh, then you both must come. You see, this is not an ordinary party, Miss Brooks, although we're all going to wear evening clothes and try to have the best possible time. Elaine and I, we realize that among school teachers... There are very few, um, how do you call it, malted millionaires? <laughs> Some of us are too thick to drink with a straw. <laughs> what you're trying to tell me is that the evening won't cost much money, is that right? Oh, it will cost you no money, Miss Brooks, but there is an admission charge. Pint of blood? <laughs> no, 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 just some old clothes. You see, I am in charge of a committee to send clothing to the poor people in France. Any sort of clothes would do, Miss Brooks. Anything that is made of cloth. Why, that sounds like a wonderful idea, Mr. Monet. I'll be delighted to come. And Mr. Boynton, do you speak for him as well? Mr. Boynton has been spoken for many times. The trouble is he doesn't answer. <laughs> oh, you mean about tonight. Yes, Mr. Monet, I feel sure I can speak for Mr. Boynton. Oh, fine. I'll be leaving then. I'll walk you to the door, Mr. Monet. Oh, my address is uh, 9066 Shoreham Drive. Try to get there before 10. And I'm sure that as my students say, we will have a ball. <laughs> I'm sure that we will. Yes, until tonight then, Miss Brooks. Stay in the groove. Oh, Natch, Mr. Monet, Natch. <laughs> and Mr. Monet. Yes? Don't take any wooden pranks. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will return in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Ladies, regardless of age, skin type, or previous beauty care, doctors prove you too may win a lovelier complexion with palm olive soap. But to win this lovelier complexion, the kind men admire and women envy, you must stop improper cleansing. Instead, use palm olive soap the way doctors advised. Remember, 36 doctors, leading skin specialists, advised 1,285 women, many with complexion problems, to use palm olive this way. Some have dry skin, some oily, some coarse looking. Using palm olive soap alone, two out of three won lovelier complexions. Now, here's what the doctors advised Wash your face with palm olive soap. Massaging for one minute with palm olive's soft lather. This cleansing massage brings your skin palm olive's full beautifying effect. Rinse. Do this three times a day for 14 days. It's that simple. But doctors have proved this way using nothing but palm olive really works. So forget other beauty care. Use palm olive soap alone for a lovelier complexion. For loveliness all over... Use big, thrifty bath size palm olive in your tub or shower. After Mr. Monet left, I tried to get Mr. Boynton on the phone to tell him about the invitation. But ours is a party line, a four party line to be exact, and every time I picked up the receiver, it was in use. Always careful not to lose my temper, I sat by the phone and drummed lightly on the top of the table 
until my five fingernails were impaled in the mahogany. <laughs> then I tried it once more. As sure as my name is Lucy Schofield, that's the only way to treat men, Emma. Believe me, if I had to do it all over again, Emma, I'd, oh, excuse me a minute, dear, I think I smell my roast burning in the kitchen. Now, that's a coincidence, Lucy. I smell my drapes burning in the living room. <laughs> Hang up now. I'll call you back. So much for Emma and Lucy. I'll try it again. Oh, it worked. At least I can dial now. I hope Lucy doesn't think Emma was kidding her. Happy New Year, Daisy. Is Fred there? <laughs> this isn't Daisy, and Fred isn't here. Will you please get off the line? What I'm trying... What do you mean, get off the line? Just what I said. Get off this line. Oh, Mrs. Telephone Company, huh? <laughs> Look, this happens to be a party line, and I happen to be the party using it at the moment. Oh, well, that's different. If you want me to come to a party, I'll be glad to talk to you. <laughs> My name is Frank Pollock. What's yours? It doesn't matter. I only... Say, Frank. Frank, are you still there? Sure, I'm still there. That was mighty nice of you to call me, Daisy. What I think of the way I treated you. <laughs> the shameful, horrible way I treated you. Don't cry, Frank. I had it coming. No. <laughs> now, will you please hang up? Your bottle is falling out of the chandelier. <laughs> well, thanks, Daisy. You're a great girl. And tell Fred to give me a buzz when he gets in. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting an early start. When a body meets a body, he's had too much rhyme. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello, Mr. Boynton. This is Miss Brooks. I assume we still have a date for tonight. Tonight? Oh, this is Friday, isn't it? Yes, December 31st. The 31st, eh? Yes, you know, the day we celebrate the appearance of the first enchilada north of Laredo, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's New Year's Eve, Miss Brooks. What are we going to do to kill a few hours together? We'll think of something, you mad, impetuous boy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's why I called. Mr. Monet and his wife are having a little impromptu party at their house, and they've invited us. Uh, what kind of party? Well, you have to have some old clothes, and then you should... Hello? Is that you, Emma? I didn't quite understand you before. No, this is not Emma. This is your friendly, cooperative, party-line neighbor. Oh, the magpie. <laughs> who are you talking to? I'm talking to nonstop Nelly, the human dial tone. <laughs> now, well, will, I you, never heard. will you please stop this filibuster and get off the line? Well, the phone company will hear about this. Uh, are you there, Miss Brooks? Yes, Mr. Boynton. As I started to tell you, although it's a formal party, we're supposed to have some piece of apparel that we can. Happy New Year! Oh, <laughs> not again. Uh, who's that? Well, it's about time you got home, Fred. That is not Fred. Oh, it isn't, huh? No, it isn't. Then it's Fred's oldest and closest friend. I demand to know who it is. <laughs> now, see here, old man. I'm not your old man. <laughs> I don't even know where your old man is. <laughs> I don't even know where my old man is. <laughs> Louis is deep, and I don't even know where my old man is. <laughs> We'd better hang up now. You can't, Daisy. You can't hang up. Not without you tell me where my old man is. <laughs> Daisy. Listen, Mr. Nobody Boynton. Wants to tell me where All my you old have to do is, is bring some old clothes with, with you. Stuff. What's that? I oh, don't know. Hardly I'm hardly there. Now put on your tux, bring but some old clothes, and pick me up in a couple Even of hours. Even though I gave you a pretty hot deal. Oh, this is impossible, Miss Brooks. I'll see you later. Oh, what did you do? You did, Frank, and I love you for it. <laughs> if you don't get off this phone, I'll have you thrown out of the bar you're calling from. Bar? Oh, is that where I'm calling from? Bless you, Daisy. You helped me find my old man. <laughs> sure, he's sitting on the stool next to me. <laughs> I better hang up now. Fred hates it when I talk to strangers. Oh, Mrs. Davis. Yes, Connie. I wonder if you'd give me a hand. I've been invited to a formal party tonight, and I just don't know what to wear. Well, what have you got, Connie? Oh, nothing. That is nothing but an old evening gown I've had for five years. Well, come on into your room, Connie, and we'll look it over. Here we are. 
It won't take long to find in my closet. Well, uh, let's see. Here's a skirt and blouse. The suit I got two years ago. Here's one of the dresses I wear to school. Here's the other one. <laughs> oh, there we are, my pride and joy. Why, that's real pretty, Connie. And look at the fringe. Silly moths, they left the best part. <laughs> While I'm in here, I'd better find something to donate as well. Donate? Yes, the price of admission to the party is some old clothing. I know I've got some because I've been wearing it. Oh, dear, I forgot to tell you, Connie, but just last week when the Goodwill truck came around, they pick up old clothes, too, you know. I gave away everything of mine I could possibly spare. Well, that's all right, Mrs. Davis. You're not going to the party. I know, but uh, I also gave away a big bundle of your stuff. You had it lying in the closet, and Mrs. I Mrs. Davis, that it... was for the cleaners. I had some of my newest clothes in that bundle. 1945 stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. Maybe you can borrow some old clothes to give. Well, I guess I'll have to. I know. I'll go over to the Conklins. He's got one suit I know could use an ocean voyage. <laughs> Come on in. Thanks, Harriet. Are your folks at home? Mother's out shopping, but Daddy's upstairs taking a nap. Come on into the living room, won't you? Walter Denton and I were just playing pass it. Look who's here, Walter. Well, if it isn't my favorite English teacher. Sit down, Miss Brooks. Harriet and I were just playing pass it. So she told me. What's pass it? Well, it's a game we read about. Lots of high school kids play it. All you do is take a piece of Kleenex and hold it to your nose by sniffing. And then with both hands behind your back, you pass it down a long line of kids by sniffing it away from your neighbor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fascinating. But where's the long line of kids? Oh, it's just as much fun with the two of us. More. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, saves wear and tear on the Kleenex, too. <laughs> uh, Harriet and I go steady. That's why I'm here. But what brings you to the dread sanctum sanctorum of your school principal during a holiday? Please, Walter, you make Daddy sound like an ogre. Yes, Walter, just because Mr. Conklin is my superior at school is no reason for me to live in dread of him. Harriet! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Daddy? Try to be a little more quiet, can't you? I've got to get some sleep. Sorry, Daddy, we'll be more careful. I don't think now is a good time to tell him you're here, Miss Brooks. You see, he's going to a big party tonight and wants to get some rest. Well, then maybe you kids can help me out. I've just got to get some old clothes somewhere right away. Why, Miss Brooks? The ones you've got on look fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Walter, I think. But I'm talking about clothes I can donate. Oh, golly, Miss Brooks. Mother just gave away every stitch we could possibly spare to the Salvation Army. Wait a minute. Daddy's new tuxedo is being delivered today. And he's got an old suit of evening clothes that I'm sure Mother would love to see given away. Say no more, Harriet. Do you think you can get it without waking your father? Well, sure, it's right here in the hall closet. Here it is, Miss Brooks. This is the suit Daddy wore when he first became a principal. Let me look at that. Hmm, I'll bet he was a sensation in these tales. Why? There are three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that's just where one of them is torn. You could patch that up in a jiffy. Thanks very much, Harriet. It's cloth anyway. Well, I'll be getting along home now. Mr. Boynton's picking me up soon, and I've got to see if my evening gown still fits me. I've had it for over five years. Oh, I think that's nice, Miss Brooks. What's nice, Walter? How you and your evening gown have grown old together. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that you're falling apart at the seams or anything. I mean... Well, to me, you're still all wool and a yard wide. <laughs> you have just failed in English for 1949. Would you care to try for 50? Uh, hello. Hello, Mr. Conklin? Yes, who's this? This is Kane from Kane's Classy Cut Clothes with four Ks. Oh, yes. Where's my tuxedo, Kane? You promised it to me by 5 o'clock. It's 10 of now. Oh, that's what I'm calling about, Mr. Conklin. I can't get the suit to you by 5 o'clock. You can't? Well, then when will it get here? Next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Next Tuesday? But I've got a very important party to attend tonight. Oh, no, no, I've got... now, please, Mr. I... Conklin, don't yell at me. What? Yell at the lapel makers union. They went out on strike yesterday. But isn't there something you can do? Somebody who can fix now, this? Ca calm yourself, you... Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Even if I gave the suit to another shop to be finished, it wouldn't do any good. The buttonhole boys went out in sympathy. But how could you... Well, why do you... 
When did this... No, 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 How take it easy, able... Mr. Conklin. When my take it easy. Let my blood to... pressure is just as high as yours. So let's be good to ourselves and exercise some control. Control? But how can I... What will I... Even if no, I have... Now, there's no well, use no of both of us aggravating. Uh, uh, goodbye, Mr. Conklin. Happy New Year. Happy... Sh- Happy... <laughs> Harriet! Yes, Daddy, we're here in the living room. Harriet, I've had a great disappointment. My taxi, oh, hello, Denton. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Conklin. We're playing pass it. Want to sniff this Kleenex off my nose onto your nose? <laughs> I can think of nothing more loathsome to do. <laughs> Harriet, do you know where your mother put my old suit of evening clothes? Your old suit, Daddy? Yes, yes. I've got to wear it tonight. Oh, but that old evening suit isn't any good, Mr. Conklin. It would make you look like a, like a head waiter in a cabaret. A head waiter in a... That happens to be one of the finest dress Please, suits. Please, Daddy. Th- I gave it to Miss Brooks just a little while ago. She and Mr. Boynton are going to a party where you have to bring some old clothes to get in. What? That does it! Not only do my teachers openly flaunt my wishes about fraternizing, but they take my evening clothes along with them. (laughs) Children, do you know what I'm going to do? No, we don't. But I know one thing. If I was Miss Brooks, I'd hop in bed and pull the covers up over my head. How does Old Faithful look on me, Mrs. Davis? Lovely, Connie. And fringe is more popular than ever. It's amazing what a tuck here and a stitch there will do. About what time did Mr. Boynton say he'd be over? About this time, Mrs. Davis. I'll get it. Good evening, Mr. Boynton. Won't you come in? Oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. Say, that's an interesting overcoat you have on. Raccoon, isn't it? (laughs) <laughs> yes. It's a relic of my college days. Do you mind if I hang it up here? It's pretty warm. Go right ahead, Mr. Boynton. Then come on into the living room. All right. Oh, hey, that's better. Well, Miss Brooks, you certainly look lovely tonight. Thanks, Mr. Boynton. You look... Mr. Boynton, I told you we were invited to a New Year's Eve party, didn't I? Well, yes, you did. Do you always go to a formal party in white flannels with a blazer and a beanie? <laughs> Formal, but you said you had to have some old clothes to get in. Some odd piece of wearing apparel is what you told me. Oh, great. I hope your sneakers are vulcanized. (laughs) I don't understand, Miss Brooks. Just what kind of a party is this? It's a formal party, Mr. Boynton, but the price of admission is some old clothes to be shipped abroad. Oh, well, I don't know. I, I don't usually go to parties on New Year's Eve. You don't? Well, how do you like to spend the evening, Mr. Boynton? Well, I usually have an early dinner, then catch the first show at the movies and hit the sack about 10.30. What does your doctor say about such carrying on? (laughs) (laughs) Look, Mr. Boynton, I've already accepted for both of us, and wait a minute. I've got a dress suit that might fit you. Then we can bring the stuff you've got on as our, our admission. Just go into my room, Mr. Boynton, and take off those clothes. Oh, Miss Brooks, what in the world... You'll find a suit of evening clothes right on the bed. Please slip them on. Mrs. Davis! Yes, Connie? Have you finished sewing Mr. Conklin's tail together? Just finishing now, Connie. Here it is, as good as new. It would make any head waiter proud. Oh, hello, Mr. Boynton. My, what a nice beanie. Three propellers. (laughs) I wish you'd tell me what this is all about, Mrs. Davis. Well, you're going to an ideal source for information. Just take this suit and put it on, Mr. Boynton, please. Well, all right, Miss Brooks, but this is all highly irregular. Now, Mrs. Davis, let's go into your room. I want you to fix my hair in the back. I'm wearing it up, you know, and it's not quite high enough. My goodness, Connie, how high do you want it? High enough so that I'll have to stand on a chair to pull it down. Well, it doesn't fit too badly, I guess. Uh, Miss Brooks, I've got the suit on. That's fine. I'll just be a few minutes. Oh, would you answer that, please, Mr. Boynton? Mrs. Davis is still rummaging in my scalp. All right. Oh, well, it's Mr. Conklin. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'd like a table down front, but not too near the drum. (laughs) Oh. uh, Oh, it's you, Boynton. Yes, sir. Won't you come in? No, I won't come in. Boynton, how did you... When did you... Who gave you... If it what wasn't are you doing? New Year's Eve, I'd what? swear that Mr. Conklin had come by. 
Oh, it is you, Mr. Conklin. Miss Brooks, I demand the return of my evening clothes at once. Your evening clothes? I cannot tell a lie, Mr. Boynton. Take it off. Take it off? Take it off! Well, don't just stand there, Mr. Conklin. Applaud a little. <laughs> Get ready, everyone. It's 12 o'clock. Turn up the radio. Well, Miss Brooks, nice party, no? Oh, very nice, Mr. Manet. Oh, but it's midnight now. The band is playing all Lang Syne, and everyone should be kissing someone. Where's your Mr. Boynton? Oh, haven't you heard, Mr. Manet? He hit the sack at 10.30. Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster queen. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Only Luster Cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream. Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean. Free of loose dandruff. Glistening with sheen. Soft. Manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Mr. Boynton didn't show me such an exciting New Year's Eve, but we had another date the next day, today. After spending the afternoon at the zoo, we came back to my house. Uh, do you mind if I turn on the radio, Mr. Boynton? Oh, not at all, Miss Brooks, but I'm afraid I can't stay to listen to it. Why not? Well, actually, I didn't get into bed on New Year's Eve until 10 minutes of 11. I've got to catch up on my sleep. <laughs> And so, as Philip Boynton faded slowly into the West, I bade him farewell in true Zulu fashion by saying, Tunga Lunga Bimba Lakta, which means, how can you leave now? Jack Benny has switched over to CBS. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palmolive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, dream girl hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Palmolive shaving cream comes both ways, and whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using either Palmolive brushless or Palmolive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new Palmolive way to shave described on the tube, and no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palmolive brushless or Palmolive lather shaving cream today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Stay tuned now for Lum and Abner, Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.